All right, CNT 120, we're looking at our Chapter 4 lab. We're in Part 2 where we're looking at our NIC criteria. So this one, uh, we've actually done some of this before, but it's always handy to kind of go back and see it again. Every time you do, you learn something more. We're going to look at our NICS uh, properties or criteria on our Windows side, then we're going to do it on our Linux side. So let's look at the Windows side. If I go to my Device Manager, so I'm going to right-click over here on my Windows icon, go to Device Manager. In here, I see all my network adapters, so I'll hit the drop-down. The first couple are pretty easy to understand on our lab PCs, Bluetooth. Then I see some Intel NICs. Uh, yours probably has this, Intel Dual Band Wireless, that's the onboard wireless NIC. Then the Intel Ethernet Connection, that's the wired NIC. Mine has an extra one for um, virtualization class, that's here for another class. And then we see a couple of virtual machine adapters down here. Okay, we're going to focus in on the Ethernet Connection here, that's the, the, the wired NIC on the back of our PC. I'm going to open that, so I'm just going to double click on it. The first window that comes up this is kind of like the properties tab for that NIC the first thing we notice is the NIC is is installed and working um, when you first install a NIC it may not be working or if you have issues it may not be working so this is one way to quick verify is the NIC up and working uh, while we're here I'm gonna have you look at a couple other things if we look at the advanced tab in here we see the um, over here on the left, different options on this NIC, but one is our speed and duplex. Uh, hopefully you remember reading about this in the chapter. Right now it's set on auto negotiation. Once upon a time, eh, back when you first started networking, you actually had to come in here and set this to be either full, blue, full duplex or half duplex in the bandwidth for what you were connected to. And if this was a wrong setting, it was not functional on that network. And that went for 10 meg, 100 meg, etc. Eventually, NICs got the capability to do auto negotiation. So when I look at a NIC today, if I go to buy a NIC today, actually let me do this. Let's let's do um, uh, let's do Tiger Direct kind of thing, and pretend to buy a NIC. If I want to buy a um, Ethernet NIC for my desktop, so let's do desktop Ethernet NIC kind of thing. One of the things I will note, actually, if I spell it correctly, <laughs> let's try that again. Desktop. Actually, let's, let's be more specific. Let's do PCI Express, PCIe Desktop NIC. There we go. Now I'll see, here's a gigabit, gigabit blah, blah, blah. What I'll notice is if I open this guy up under features or capabilities, maybe even under specs, we'll see it's gigabit Ethernet. This thing is capable of running, hopefully in the overview it shows you here, Ethernet gigabit fast ethernet this is capable of running 10 100 and gigabit speeds so this would actually if i look up the name of it i might actually see 10 slash 100 slash 1000 nick that means it's capable of auto negotiation right here so if i set it on auto negotiate whatever it connects to it will adjust its bandwidth to connect to that hub or switch or whatever it happens to be too um, that was something that you read about in the chapter that's handy to see here. Under the driver tab, uh, there is a driver installed, but if I had issues with this NIC, maybe it's not working, I might need to update the driver on it. Let's say I come in here and put on, uh, there's Windows 10s on here now, maybe I come in and put on Windows 25. I'm making that up, I know, but you get the idea. I might need to actually download and update the driver for this, what I would do is download this file probably onto my laptop, put it on a jump drive, bring it over to here, over to this desktop, and say, I have this on my USB drive, point to that file and say, please update this for me. And it would grab that file, update the NIC, and hopefully be working for my Windows 25 installer, whatever I have running on here. So that's how I would deal with my, my uh, drivers, if you will. Okay, so there is looking at my NIC on my Windows machine. If I go to my Linux VM, so I'll pull my Linux VM here. I'll get my lab handy again. We're going to do the same kind of thing. We'll go to Menu, Preferences, Network. So Menu, Preferences, and Network on this guy. Scroll down here. And what I'll see is my NIC is up and functioning. And kind of most of what I want to know is right here. If it were not functioning, it would give you errors like unplugged or not uh, connected that sort of thing so a lot of what I'm looking for is actually right here on this window to see if this NIC is functioning and I even see it down here in this little icon as well connected to wired network so I, I get roughly the same information looking at the network settings here 
Okay, I'm going to close that for now, kind of minimize. So there's looking at our NICs, our NIC criteria on both of these. Now let's take a little closer look at the back of our PC. Well, I'm not going to be able to grab my camera and, and put it around the back, but in lab I'm going to have you kind of lean around the back and look at your NICs on the back of your PC. And what you're looking for is this. This is a video somebody had online, so I'm just kind of borrowing their video. I'm looking for the nick in the back that my patch cable is plugged into. And I'm going to look a little closer. I'll see there's two lights here. And if I look, this guy actually shows me these two lights. One is solid and one is blinking. That's what I'm having you look for. So I'm going to want you to look at the back of your PC and look at this port. This is roughly what it looks like. And I'll see one light is blinking and one light is solid. I want you to note that. And I want you to note the color and what it's doing, okay? The color and what it's doing, and more importantly, what does it mean? Well, I'm going to give you the clue right here. If you take a look, this light blinking, that's your activity light. That means it's actually sending and receiving data on the network. It's trying to give you a visual representation of data coming and going on this NIC. So this one right here is your activity light, if you will. The one on the right... The solid one over here is the link light. So if you look again, let me back up on their video. If you look, that never goes out. That is your link light. So this one's your activity, showing, passing, and receiving your data. This is the link. Now, most manufacturers follow this kind of guideline. This color over here changes depending on whether you're on a 10, 100, or gigabit connection. Um, they're not all standard, but you know, roughly speaking, uh, maybe the green is 100 meg, orange is 10 meg kind of thing, or orange is 100 meg and green is a gig kind of thing. That's roughly what you find on the link light over here. So solid color, in this case green, it would be indicating, you know, gigabit connection kind of deal. Meanwhile, this guy over here, blinking green, that's your activity light, showing activity on the network. That's what I want you to look at on the back of your neck. Give me the colors and their functions. They might be different for our neck. Okay? And you're going to save that into a little text file called Link Lights. So I can open up my notepad here again. And I'll put in here uh, my Link Lights. And on the back of my neck I have my left light. I'll, if I can spell, oh my goodness, my left light, I'll indicate whether it's, it is blinking and what color, blinking blah color, and this is indicating this is my activity light, this is network activity, meaning, meanwhile, the right light is solid blah color, and that'll tell me that this is the link light at link light at blah bandwidth. Okay, that'll be something you'll need to gather from being in the lab and looking at your NIC. So again, I'll do a save as on this. I'll throw it into, I'm going to go to my chapter four lab folder. I started one and I'll just call this guy link lights. Link lights for my lab kind of thing. And there's the second part of our lab looking at the actual lights on the back of our NIC. Um, and this is handy when you're troubleshooting, looking at functionality. Are things working? Uh, are things, uh, you know, is it passing, receiving data, that kind of thing. So there's the second part of our lab.